All right, so in this afternoon section, I just want to go through what we'll be doing today, and I'm going to use my morning YouTube playlist to show you, and just as quick review, right? So this is Unit 9 for our digital art course. Unit 9 includes first, let me go to our course. First and foremost, it includes a question of the day about raster images versus vector images and when you want to use which one, right? So unit nine is all about vector design. We're in the middle of it. So the question of the day is the first deliverable for that. You can still get credit for it. If you want to get credit for it before you get your midterm grades on Monday, try to do it before I'd say Friday. So, because I'll be doing a lot of grading. And what's nice about it is it's very simple. What is a vector? What is a raster? What are the advantages of a vector over a raster in certain uses? And I have the links to these slides that we've looked at a lot, right, which go through these things. And then also go through different logo approaches, on and on and on. But then we start learning how to make vectors. And we want to always, when we're doing graphic symbols or logos, we want to think black shapes rather than line art. Right. So often when we take our proving ground sketches and we choose the approach we want to do, we have to refine it into something that has solid black shapes. So we can understand that. All right. So that's why I'm telling you to think in terms of big black shapes that are really scalable. And Tracy, I'm going to show this to you. I'm in Google Slides here. It's a lot like using PhotoP. If I click on the slide view here and do Command minus, it will zoom out the slide and zoom in. But if I click on the URL and do Command minus, it will zoom out on the tools and then zoom in. You see how the tools are getting bigger and smaller? So it matters where you click before you zoom on these sites. But why did I click on the slide and zoom? It's so I can make sure that it's really visible, whether it's big or small. And you see how the line art, when you make it small, you really lose its clarity. So that's why graphic symbols and logos, the main thing is that they are clear, engaging, and versatile, which means they have to work really small, like on a business card, and really large, like on the side of a semi-truck. So you want black shapes. So in order to do that, we took our sketches, which might be kind of outlining, and we turn them into just rough approximations of where our black shapes would be. And we just did this right in PhotoP, or you can composite it, right? But the next step is to bring it into a vector program. And so this is doing it in Illustrator, and that's what I'm doing in the morning class, should you want to do it with Adobe Illustrator which in some ways is better and in some ways is a little bit more frustrating. So what do we do in this morning class with Adobe Illustrator? Well, you set up your sketch and then you start tracing your vector shapes over the top of your refined sketch. You can use the shape tools, you can use the pen tool, you can use the cornering options on the anchors to change straights into curves, or you can use the pen tool to set professionally straights and curves. That's all in Illustrator. I'm going to show you all of that in our freeware, vector.com, but it's just slightly different, right? And then ultimately, we were able to finish it up. So what do we want by the end of today's class? We want, in our assignment 4 folder, to have our refined sketch posted in Canvas, and then to create, in a vector program, we're going to use freeware, but a clean vector shape. I'm just opening up Illustrator really quick to show you. Because vectors cannot go online. It's just Illustrator can take a while to open sometimes. So there you see the clean vector. And I'm going to turn on the sketch behind it. And you'll see the difference. So this is the sketch in a vector program. You can see the pixels very cleanly. But the vector, come on. 
there we go, is going to always be perfectly clean no matter how much you zoom in. Right? That is the quality of them. All right. So then once I have this, this is what's super important. We are making our vector only with black shapes, not with black and white shapes. So if you move it onto the gray here, you can see how the white isn't in there at all. And so I just have that on a different layer that's locked right now, so it didn't move. And that's why each of these shapes we have to really be able to control. All right. Now, we are not using Illustrator. The morning videos can show you how to do it in Illustrator. But this is our afternoon class. We're doing it with freeware. So if I open up assignment four, I am going to find my refined sketch, which is here, of my flying tiger. Right. And I do not actually need, for the first time, to open any file from my folder. Instead, I just need to go to the assignment, which is after the proving ground and where you posted your sketches. Now we are in assignment four, but you have to do your proving ground first in order to know how to make your refined sketch for assignment four. And in assignment four, it gives you the link to our freeware program, which is vector.com. Zoom in on the tools again. All right, they used to have a lot more tutorials and helpful links. Remember, I showed you this last class. Under assignments, we have a mentorship presentation on how to use vector.com just using some basic shape tools. So to get to that, you go to assignments. It's our shortcut. And you can go right to assignment four. You'll see the link to my explanation of vectors and rasters and logo design. But then you have this digital mentorship presentation link, which goes through how to use vector.com and kind of introduce you to its basic features. And it doesn't have everything that's important, but it has some really, really helpful things to create your logo. The difference is, and I've updated it, I thought, let's see. Yes, I updated this right now because there has been a change in the freeware, which happens with freeware, right? Because no one's paying for it. So no longer can we save it as a vector file out of vector.com, which is a big disadvantage, right? But I am going to show you how we can use another freeware program that we've already used before. It's the Easy GIF Maker. Also has a conversion tool from JPEG to SVG. The important thing is to be able to build it as a vector so that we have perfectly clean edges so that when we vectorize it or image trace it into a vector, it won't make any mistakes. I know that all sounds complicated. It will make sense when we get to it. So that's why I've put here, even though we're going to build this in vector.com, we're going to be building it as a vector. And because we don't want to have to pay for vector.com, we're not going to save it as a vector format. We're going to save it as a JPEG format because that's all it allows for free. But then we're going to vectorize that JPEG back into a vector. And because we created it as a vector, it will match it perfectly. Okay. So you just have to trust me on it. It's very hard to find free ways to actually save vector files. But once you're in the assignment, and when you click on vector.com, right here. It will ask you to sign in. Always sign in with your same email. I just use my Google account. And then it will remember all of your progress. What's nice under my designs, right? What's nice about vectors is they take up very little memory. So un unlike PhotoP remembering all the pixels in its cloud, which was unreliable, this remembers everywhere I was last class, and it gives me each vector path that I've created so far. So I'm going to continue with this. And you can look at last class's videos to know how to put your sketch in, or I can just show you really quickly here 
because I can go to my home and then I can say open file. So if you're just starting in vector.com, I wanted everyone to have a finished refined sketch by the beginning of class today so that you can have some time to work on it and making your black shape vector. All you do is you find your refined sketch. It can be a JPEG, it can be a PNG, doesn't matter. And you, you say in vector.com, open it, and it will open it in the program. Then you're going to go to layers. You're going to click on this as an image. This is not a vector. This is raster based. But on the sides, you'll see the properties for the image. You're going to set that opacity down, onion skin it, and then you're going to lock it so that you can't mess with that image. All you're going to do with it is turn it on or off as you're tracing your vectors over the top. We've talked about the shape tools. You have them just like you had them in PhotoP. You can build with them. I don't have a lot of really simple shapes here, so they're not very helpful. But for instance, if I had triangular eyes, you know, I could just use this triangle tool and then I could transform it and I can make these white under the properties. And then I can copy and paste it and tilt it, use it on the other side. And then I could use the ellipse shape tool for the big part of the tiger's head, right? And kind of squeeze it and tilt it. But I'm gonna make this black because we're doing black shape logos. So just like the shape tools in, in PhotoP, I need to now layer that path behind my other paths. So now I have a black shape and two white shapes. The difference is we don't want a black and white logo. We want just a black shape logo. So how do I now punch these shapes out of this shape? I do it this way. I select all of them by holding down shift and select all three, and it will give me these options. These options here are called the Pathfinder options. I want this one to subtract the front from the back. And now I have a shape with two cutouts from it. Does that kind of make sense? And then I can modify this shape to look better. I double click on it and I see my anchor points. And then I can add anchor points and then start moving them to reflect the shape of my tiger's head. So one way to think of it is that this is not a drawing program. This is a plotting program. All vector programs are about plotting anchor points and then the, the either the straights or the curves between those anchor points. And what's the advantage of a plotting program is they're incredibly exact. And you always have control of each plot. Before there were printers, like inkjet printers, there were plotters. And those have been around for a long time. And that's, this is how they deal with images, because it takes up a lot less memory to plot from point to point than to remember every pixel. So all I'm doing is adding new anchor points by clicking on the path where they don't exist and then dragging them out to where I want them. But then sometimes they become really weird like that. <laughs> so then I might need to refine them a little bit. And to do that, I want to double click so I can see them. And then I want to double click on the actual anchor point. And that way I can turn it from a curve into a straight or back again by double clicking. When I turn it into a curve, I get handles on both sides. If I want to modify those handles, I can hold down shift to lengthen or shorten one side and change the angle, which is often a good idea. Or I can hold down command for the most extreme options. And that way I can actually alter the angles if you want to do the most with the fewest anchor points. And the cleanest design is usually using the fewest anchor points. Right. So I might take a tiger's head kind of like this, plot some new anchors here just for these points, and then double click on some of these to turn them into straights. So first double click so I can see them, and then double click on just those individual anchor points. I showed you last class how you can do 